Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to talk about reskinning monsters in Roll20. Specifically, we're going to turn this goblin into a demonic apple. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So reskinning a monster allows you to change a monster so that it fits the feel and flavor of your campaign, while at the same time not messing up any of the mechanics or the CR side of things. And while there are a ton of awesome monster books out there, sometimes the thing you're looking for just isn't available to you, and that's where reskinning comes in. I had this happen to me recently with my Friday Night Scarlet Citadel campaign, and that's what inspired this video, so I'd like to talk you through the process of what I did and how it works. So just to set the stage real quick, in my campaign I had a meteor land in an orchard in the town where the players were staying, and the energy from that meteor corrupted the apple trees so that when the players went to investigate the meteor strike, they would get attacked by the apples and then all manner of excitement would ensue. So in all of my monster books, I didn't have a demonic apple anywhere. So what I wanted to do was take a relatively low level monster and reskin it so that it would still be CR appropriate, but thematically would fit into my game. So what I'm going to show you how to do right now is how we're going to turn that goblin, which is a low level monster and appropriate for this tier of play, into something that is terrifying and unique from my player's perspective. So the first thing we need to do is get a goblin into our game. So I'm going to go over to the compendium tab here. I've already searched for the word goblin, and I'm just going to pull the goblin that's in the monster manual and drop him right onto the board here. Okay, now, if I go into my journal tab, we see we have the goblin. Awesome. I'm going to open up the goblin's character sheet. I'm just going to click on that right there, and I'm going to go to edit, and we're going to say duplicate. And when we duplicate, we get a copy of the goblin here. I'm still looking at the original goblin right now, so I'm going to close this. And I'm going to open up copy of goblin. So there we go, copy of goblin. Fantastic. So now we just need to make some edits to this character sheet. So let's go ahead, we'll say edit. And we're going to change the name here to demon apple. And we also want to get a better image here, right? We don't want it to look like a goblin anymore. So what I've done here is come out to Pixabay, which is a website where you can get royalty-free images. And I'm just going to download this guy as a PNG. We'll go ahead and we'll say download. And we'll say that we aren't a robot. Download the image. And I also do want to mention that this image comes to us from Dmitry Abernoff. Crediting isn't required, but linking back is greatly appreciated. Dmitry, this is a cool little picture. Thank you so much. All right, so now that we've got our image, we're going to take that over to another website called Token Stamp. And token stamp is where we can create tokens from artwork. So I'm going to drag the Apple image we just downloaded onto the page here. And let's give our token a border, make it look a little more 5e-ish. I'm going to resize the image a little more so it fits in the whole thing. There we go. And now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to say download. And that will download our new image as a token. In fact, it gives us this. So now let's go back to roll 20. And the first thing we're going to do is remove the avatar here. And we're going to take that token we just created. We're just going to drag that onto that spot to replace the avatar. And then we're also going to drag the token onto the battle map here. And we'll resize it so that it's about the right size. And let's open the token up here and let's set some things. We're going to say this token represents the demon apple. We're going to set its attributes here. So the first bar here is going to be HP. And we'll fill in that 7 out of 7. Now, an interesting thing here, if we leave this set to HP, what will happen is if we have multiple apples on the board and one of them takes damage, they're all going to take damage. So what we're going to do is unlink this ability from HP. We're just going to set it to none. And now we'll have 7 out of 7 for none there. And then bar 2 is going to be the NPC AC. There we go. And then bar three, I'm going to leave blank. I don't need anything else there. We're also going to say update default token. And what that's going to do is make this the new default token for our demon apple. So when I click save settings, you'll see that we've actually updated the default token. So it's this little guy instead of the original goblin artwork. Okay, so now let's click save changes. Awesome, and now we've got our demon apple character sheet, but you'll notice a lot of the stuff in here still refers to goblin. So let's make some more changes. I'm gonna click on the cog here. We'll change the name again, it's gonna be demon apple. Uh, we're gonna change the NPC type to small plant. 
And the armor class can still be 15. It's just not going to be leather armor anymore. We're just going to say this is natural. I'm going to leave everything else the same up here. The hit points, the hit point formula, the speed, all the stats, all that's just fine. But I am going to make some changes to the actions. So for starters, I don't really want the apple to have nimble escape. So I'm just going to click on the lock here and delete that. Relock. And then I want to make some edits to the actions. So the apple isn't armed with weapons, but it has natural attacks. So instead of it having a scimitar, I want it to bite people. So I'm going to call this the chomp attack. And the attack bonus and the damage is going to stay the same, but we'll change this from slashing to piercing damage because teeth are more piercing. And then the apple isn't going to use a short bow, but I do want it to have a ranged attack. So we're going to change this one and we're just going to call it spit seeds. And the reach on that, I'm going to change that so it's a little bit more in line with like a spear. So we'll say 20 to 60 rather than uh, the bow's range. But again, we're going to leave the other things exactly the same. Click that and now we have a unique creature that has the exact same mechanical statistics as a goblin, but the players have never seen before. Okay, now let's just take a quick check and make sure that everything's working properly here. So we'll jump back to chat. Let's try out the chomp attack. Okay, great. Chomping from Demon Apple and we got damage. Great. Let's do spit seeds. Okay. And we get damage. Fantastic. So everything is working properly. And now what we can do is just close this character sheet. We'll delete our original goblin off the board. I'll go back to my journal tab. And now I can just drag my demon apple out as many times as I need to. It's got all of the stats set properly and they're all independent. So if I change the HP on this one, it doesn't update anybody else. So that's good. And now I can just put these guys into the trees. And then when my party comes in, they're going to have this encounter with these apples and see what happens. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to reskin monsters in Roll20. And that gives you the ability to really make these monsters your own and make them fit with whatever scenario you've got going on in your own games. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.